Hello and welcome to this Wise and Unity tutorial. Today we are going to be looking at ducking or side chaining, as it can also be called. So th essentially, this is when you base the volume of one sound source off the volume of another. So for example, if you want your music to get quieter when a loud explosion goes off, that's where I'm going to be showing you how to set up, at least in a very basic way. So you can see I've got two sounds already in my WISE project. I would recommend for this using one kind of extended sound, whether that be you know, an ambience or music or something like that. So for this, I've chosen rain and then one kind of more one shot style sound effect. So I've chosen an explosion. So a gunshot, you know, anything like that, that will help demonstrate the effect a little bit better. So once we've done that, and by the way, if you don't know how to get these, all you have to do is under the actor mixer hierarchy, right click on the default work unit, hit new child, sound SFX, name it whatever you'd like, and then drag a file from your file browser onto this object. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. But other than that, I have done nothing else to these two sound SFX objects. I have no effects, no positioning, no RTPCs, nothing. So just two basic sound SFX objects. Next, what we need to do is go into the Game Syncs tab here in the Project Explorer. And if you're not seeing a screen kind of like this, go up to Layouts and Designer. And then you should see a screen similar to this. So now go up to your Game Syncs tab and we're going to create a new game parameter. So I'm going to right click on the default work unit under game parameters, go new child and game parameter. And I'm going to call this explosion underscore playing. So once we have that, this screen should pop up. So for the range, what we're going to do is we're going to set the minimum to negative 48 to represent the bottom of our dynamic range. And we're going to set the max to zero to represent the top of our dynamic range. And then we're going to set the default to negative 48, because if we set it to the max, it will automatically start ducking our signal. And that's not what we want. So we're just going to go ahead and leave it at negative 48. So I'm going to save. And then at least for right here, we are good to go. So next, what we need to do is go back over to our audio tab. And then we're going to set up two audio buses. So hit this little plus right next to the default work unit under the master mixer hierarchy. And now you'll see this master audio bus. And this is the bus that all the audio in the game is going to end up getting routed through. So we're going to right click on that, hit new child, and then do audio bus, not auxiliary bus. Make sure it's an audio bus. So the first one I'm going to call combat bus. And I'm going to hit it again, right click, new child, audio bus. And I'm going to call this one environment bus. So the next thing that I'm going to do is go to my combat bus. And under the effects, I'm going to hit these little arrows right here, go down to the wise meter and then hit new. You can see I've already made one right here to test it, but I'll make a new one just to show you how you do it. So hit new. We'll call this um, side chain meter. Hit OK. And then now go into the edit button right here at the end of this line. And that'll open up this screen. And you can see the reason we used 0 and negative 48 for a minimum maximum is that these are the defaults already in here. So it makes it nice and convenient. And then under the output game parameter, we have to hit these arrows and select our explosion playing. So now this meter knows it's looking for this game parameter. Game parameter. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And that's what we need for our combat bus. Now we're going to need to go into our environment bus. So this goes for anything. So the combat bus is what we're going to be using to attenuate the environment bus. So say, for example, you want your dialogue to attenuate your music, you would use the same kind of thing where you would put the meter on your combat bus and then do what you're about to do for your music, per se. So we're going to go into our environment bus. And now what we're going to do is we're going to set up an RTPC. So that means it's a real-time parameter control. So go ahead and open up this. 
and then you'll see kind of an empty screen right here. And what you'll need to do is go down to the Y axis and X axis box right here, go create. So the first one you'll select is we're going to do voice volume. Then on the X axis, you're going to go to game parameters and select the explosion playing game parameter that we made. And once you've selected that, you can see that we have this line coming up now. So this line by default gives us a value of negative 48 at negative 200 and 0, 0. And this is actually the opposite of what we want, because we want this to be attenuated when the other volume is at 0. So we're going to go ahead and flip these. So we'll set this to 0. And then we'll bring this down to, say, right about here. And Another thing too is you can double click anywhere on the line and make a new point. So I'm going to set that maybe between negative 20 and negative 25. And then you can right click on this line to change the shape of the line. So we'll make it something like you know, logarithmic. So it's got a little bit of a nicer curve there. And you can set it all the way down to zero if you'd like. So if your combat bus is coming through at full zero, that the uh, environment bus will be completely quiet, but leaving it a little bit lower so there's still some signal coming through tends to be a good practice. So now that we have all of that set up, what we need to do is go back into our sound SFX objects and assign them to these new buses. So for our explosion, you can go to the output bus section in the general tab, in the general settings tab, Select this, or excuse me, select right here, and set that to your combat bus. Then go into your rain and do the same, except this time we're going to set this to our environment bus. So now the rain is going through the environment bus, which is then going to go through the master bus and be output into the game. And same for the explosion. It's going to the combat bus, then the master bus, and then out for the game. So what we need to do now is go ahead and make sure you save your project hit F7 or go to the Layouts tab and Sound Bank. Just hit Generate Selected. Make sure if you're setting this up the first time that you have your new Sound SFX objects, that you have play events for them down here in the Event Viewer, and then that you have dragged those events into the Hierarchy Inclusion. So make sure you have those set. Then once you've done that, go ahead, hit Generate Selected. I'm going to hit Close. And then now we should be good to go to move into Unity to show you what we've done. So in Unity, I've gone ahead and set up a little demonstration here. So I have two boxes. One is white and one is blue. So the first box right here, what I've done is set this to play my rain. So what I did is you can add a cube to the scene by right clicking in the hierarchy, go to 3D object cube or any other shape that you'd like, really. Then I went down to Add Component and typed in AK Ambient and added that. And then you'll get an AK Game Object and an AK Ambient Script. I set it to Trigger on Start. And then I set the name to Play Rain. So because I already have one of those set up, I'm going to go ahead and delete this, but that's how you do that. But just make sure that this is set to trigger on start for your rain or your music or whatever your longer sound is going to be. And then I duplicated that. So I pressed Control D to create a new cube. And then all I did on that new cube, which is this blue one I have over here, is changed the name to play explosion. And then I set my trigger on to AK trigger enter instead of start. So once again, because I already have that set up, I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And last but not least, if you are once again setting this up for the first time, make sure that on your wise global object or just a game object in the scene, you have an AK bank script added to that to an object that is set to load on start with the name of your main sound bank. So once you've done all that, we can demonstrate what exactly is about to happen. So I'm going to hit play, and you can hear our rain now. 
And then when I walk into the cube, you hear that dip? That is our ducking or our side chaining working. So right now it's not very smooth. It doesn't sound very good, but that's something that takes a lot of fine tuning. And this is just kind of the general basics of how that is set up. So hopefully now that you know how to do that, you can play around with it and getting it sounding very nice. And I hope it helped. And yeah, I will see you all in the next one.